Um, so I think what, we'll, what we are going to do for this session is it's the third one of really going sub-regionally to see what are the different dynamics when it comes to net zero across the continent. Um, we started off just talking about decarbonization, looking at edge and carbon zero, and also looking at um, and really celebrating Africa Logistics Properties based in Kenya, who is one of our first net zero carbon signatories as part of the World Green Building Council. So really celebrating the work that they have done, which is really good globally. And now, um, and then we went to East Africa with some of our Green Building Councils in East Africa. There was quite a lot of good sentiments, a little bit of debate about challenges and opportunities and really what that looks like for Africa. Then we moved to Southern Africa where we had our Green Building Councils there. Speak a little bit more specifically because Southern Africa, a lot of the countries there do have a high carbon factor in their energy sources. So what does net zero carbon look like in a region where there's a high carbon factor but also high um, climate vulnerability. And now we are in West Africa. Um, and so it's quite exciting just to introduce our panelists. So if all our panelists could please put your videos on. So that's Emmanuel Falude, who's representing Nigeria, um, who are in the process of becoming a member of the World Green Building Council. And we also have Anne Tier 2 from Cameroon, so Green Building Council, Cameroon. Um, and really also representing Francophone, West Africa, West and Central Africa. Um, so we have as well, and if you could please put your camera on. And then we have Temilola Sonola, who is from IFC Edge. So we kind of have circled. We started with IFC Edge and we're circling <laughs> right back. Um, and Temi will speak a little bit more now that we've heard the context, now that we've heard about Edge and you know carbon zero, Temi will speak a little bit more about what that looks like for the West and Central Africa region to really get us started, including celebrating some of the um, projects that have been happening in West Africa, including Actis, um, who've been doing some great work in West Africa. So Temi will speak a bit more about that to start the conversation, and then we'll go over to our panelists. Um, so yeah, over to you, Temi, and you can share your screen again. You should have the okay. option to do that. Let me just do that. Okay. And I thank you. I saw you in a traditional way, which is amazing. Ah. <laughs> you made a, made a deal about this. I ended up wearing my Southern African way. Yes, I, I had to show that. Uh... <laughs> okay. Let me just and share my screen. Over to you, and then we'll go straight into our panel on net zero solutions in West and Central Africa. Thank you. Okay. Can you see my screen now? I'm sharing. Okay. I Thank you. Yes, we can see your screen. Perfect. You thank can. You. Perfect. Okay. So thank you so much, um, Vera, for having me here um, to talk about, you know, our uh, journey towards zero carbon. And um, I joined the the um, panel on East Africa, and um, there were some really enlightening questions that um, were asked there that why are we really doing this you know why why is africa um, doing this when we are more or less the ones that did cause the um, climate change or maybe we only have about 10 percent of the climate change and i like the answer that uh, to bc gave that uh, if we say we're not going to do anything right the impact on us will probably be um, 90 percent more than um, the European countries. So this is something we have to address, um, whether we like it or we like it. So um, I'm going to be speaking briefly on um, EDGE and how you can use this uh, for your path towards zero carbon and how um, simple it is. Uh, for those who already know about EDGE, um, you just pardon me so that I can just run through quickly some of the elements of EDGE for those who've never heard about uh, the program. But I will run through quickly so that um, I don't bore those who already know fully about uh, the program. Um, I work with um, the IFC, International Finance Corporation, which is part of the World Bank Group. And all of you some of you or all of you do know about the World Bank Group that IFC is just um, one component of um, the 
the World Bank Group. We work with um, the private sector to stimulate markets and to find solutions to the problems of um, emerging markets. And that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, we do advisory, we do investment. And one of the things we found, or one of the problems we found with the magic markets were that, was that it was quite difficult for them to um, go green. And we looked at it and thought, you know, what, is, what are the issues? What, what can we do to actually stimulate these markets to go green? Um, and the program it looks into various parts. Of course, there is a policy side, the government side. What can the government do to help stimulate uh, the markets? Uh, we've heard over the uh, previous sessions that government policy also helps to, to catalyze the markets. And it's not just government policies, but also private policies. So, in this case, we work with um, the government, we work with um, the private sector, we work um, with financial institutions because a lot of the things that developers say is that where's the money going to com come from? And I will speak on that uh, later on as well, that indeed a lot of financial institutions are also moving um, towards greening your building, uh, not just greening your building, but um, going zero carbon as well. So EDGE really means, is, is, is an acronym and it means excellence in design for greater efficiencies. It um, has three main parts, which is the free software. I'm not sure whether we have um, a lot of certification programs that have free software. I haven't heard of them, but I know that um, EDGE has a free software that you can log into as a developer, not just as a developer for anyone who would like to um, grid their building. So if you have a three bedroom that um, you're building and you really want to quickly check whether you are meeting the green standards, you can use this software to simulate your project. Now, the standards we request of you is just 20% better than the base case in your country. So if a three bedroom apartment is doing um, 100 um, kilowatts or 100 watts on their, on their energy, we say that you should be able to do just maybe about 50 watts so that you are saving energy. Um, if it's 20%, you yeah, are just maybe to do just um, 20 watts. So you are saving energy. And of course, um, there has to be a third party um, label on your building to say that um, you are certified. So by just telling me your building is certified, uh, doesn't mean that it is certified or it is green. You have to make sure that you get a third party to um, indeed give you a stamp that the building is certified. There are three levels of certification and this will lead us to zero carbon eventually. The first level is that you do 20% better in terms of your energy, your water use, and um, the materials that you use for your building. If you decide to actually um, do better, which we encourage a lot of our developers to do, is 40%. Um, more than the normal baseline in your country or in your city. And that gives you edge advanced. Once you're edge advanced, you actually one step towards zero carbon. And what exactly do we mean by zero carbon? That all your energy use during the operation of your building is um, either fully renewable or you have been able to do um, renewables and carbon offsets. So your building could now be said to be, okay, totally off-grid and um, all the energy you use within that building is seen as um, zero carbon. You're not emitting anything at all into the atmosphere. So that's zero carbon. And um, I will take you through some of the um, projects in Nigeria or some of the developers in Nigeria who have pledged towards this. So it's not something um, that's not doable. We do also have within our portfolio um, projects that have done this. So 
definitely it is possible. There are advantages to certification. So if you do decide to certify, there are certain be benefits that you will get, not just from the market, the financial institutions, but also from ISC itself, because we will assist you or give you uh, as much marketing as possible. And of course, your building also will, will um, sell quicker. So there are several benefits before we even get to um, zero carbon. If you can certify your building, you start getting the benefits right away. And the ex certification program is um, all over the world. Wherever we have um, an IFC office, you will find um, the EDGE program there. We have, um, for Africa, we have some priority countries, but other, other countries also are serviced from all those uh, priority countries. So um, for any, any country, I think the last country that, um, uh, we had um, certification from was um, probably Tanzania. I think they were on earlier on today. So any country at all, we will do certifications and we do all, all the typologies, whether it's industrial, retail, um, we always say as long as it has four walls and a, and a roof, then it can be certified. So exactly why are we looking at buildings? Um, the bu buildings contribute about between um, 25 to 40% of uh, greenhouse gases to the environment. And um, within that, right, there, there is um, unrealized energy efficiency pot potential. When we say potential, there, there is, there, we can convert that energy to renewable energy. And the renewable energy, let's say, for example, um, solar PVs. If you can use um, solar PVs in your building, you are already uh, realizing energy efficiency. So the potential is there to make sure that we change our energy source, not just the renewables, they could be um, hydro or any type of um, energy that is renewable. So the, the, the um, potential is definitely there. And, um, we also know that maybe very soon uh, in Africa, we're going to have uh, regulatory bodies telling us that um, your, your energy use should be this uh, much. We know that um, for quite a few countries in Africa, they do have uh, energy codes. Nigeria is um, probably going to have an energy, energy code as well very soon. So regulatory bodies are going to start asking that we do this thing. So it um, behoves on us to ensure that uh, we start looking at these things in order to, to know exactly what steps to take even before those regulatory frameworks come in. So how can we help you? <laughs> how can we map towards um, a zero carbon building? Now, the, the um, UN, obviously, and uh, Green Middle Castle as well, do have something laid out in terms of what our goals are for zero carbon. And we want to make sure that all our new buildings are zero carbon by 2030. That's just eight years from now. And that all buildings, whether old or new, has to be um, zero carbon by 2050. So that is the map. For EDGE, we tell you that this is what you can do. If you have buildings now in your portfolio, you can assess those buildings using the EDGE tool. That's the app that I mentioned that was online. You assess it and check your inventory and make sure that or just find out what you are using in terms of energy and so on and so forth. Now you raise the bar and decide that if you're not meeting the energy standards, what exactly are you going to do? You need to probably put in retrofits to get your energy up to the standard for um, um, certification. 
So for um, you, you could decide that I want to be edge advanced. I want my energy to be 40% better than uh, a baseline in my city. So once you give yourself that goal, let's say the goal that is written down means that you definitely can meet it. And once you think about it, all you need to do is run with it and achieve it. So you decide that I am going to ensure that my buildings are able to reach edge advanced by so, so, so year. Once you do that, you now go further to say that, okay, I can, I can decide to actually go zero carbon. And I will show you some of the pledges that have been done by some companies in Nigeria. And uh, as I've heard today in other parts of Africa, going um, net zero. So once you map that, then you can work on it to get to net zero. So it's doable. It's not something that uh, it is um, in the air somewhere or something that is unachievable. It is possible. And this also shows exactly the same thing. What you need to do is reduce your energy use. Once you reduce your energy use, um, get renewable energy as well, maybe put in um, solar PVs. Once you do that, you can um, offset the, the, the remaining energy using carbon offsets, or you can invest even more in more renewable technologies. And once you do that, and you can get up to the 100%, which is um, zero carbon. All these are possible within the Edge app. It helps you, the Edge app helps you to track and see what your percentage is in terms of your energy. And it also tells you what kind of retrofits or what you can put in place to help you get to your goal. So all you need to do is, is um, get online and you can, you can do this. Now, some of the market leaders are already doing this. Um, we've heard about, we've heard from ALP today uh, about their own zero carbon um, strategy and what they're going to do in the next few years. We do also have um, Alpha Need, which has um, also made a pledge towards zero carbon. Um, I'll show you their pledge um, very shortly. So there are organizations that are doing this and you don't want to be left behind. So Alpha Mead has um, said by um, 2030, they will make sure that they have 10,000 square meters of edge certified, um, edge certified net zero carbon. Now, the last time we met with them, they were looking even more uh, at a bigger square meter than this. So the main thing is let's take the baby, baby steps that will get us to this net zero. Let's decide, first of all, that all our buildings are going to be edge advanced. And after being edge advanced, we can work on other things that we can put in place for our building to get it to net zero. The good thing about edge also is that um, we certify des a design and at final stage of construction. So if you put all the necessary things in place at design for your building, then it's a lot cheaper for you because you don't, you'll not be doing retrofits. We all know that retrofits cost a lot more than if you had planned right from the beginning for all, this, uh, all the efficiency measures necessary. So that's um, Alpha Mead. We also have uh, Baldwin. Baldwin is in South Africa. Um, that has also pledged a million square meters of net zero carbon by 2030. So um, there are companies that are saying this and now they will definitely do it. This is from ALP, who we heard from before as well, who have um, um, a zero carbon pledge as well. We also heard from NEO. NEO is um, zero carbon already and um, what they did was to get off of course up to the edge advanced and then they um, fitted um, hydro, hydroelectric power into their buildings to get them to zero carbon. So there are already buildings within the edge portfolio that are fully zero carbon. This is another one from the Bulgaria. So we're looking for stories from Africa and um, we've um, 
the COP27 happening in Egypt, we must have stories that we can tell from Africa that shows that indeed we can do this and we'll surely do this. So we're putting the gauntlet down for everyone out there, for developers out there to tell the world that indeed Africa can do, can do this. So lastly, I'll talk about um, financial intermediaries, financial institutions who are also looking to this. Now we do have financial institutions who ask us, do you have um, any, any um, edge certified buildings on your portfolio who are looking for financing? And we send um, names and we send companies to these financial intermediaries to say, yes, these guys are, are building. We've also had um, some institutions telling us that they will finance at a um, lower interest rate if you are willing to um, go higher, if you're willing to do advanced, if you're willing to do, to do um, zero carbon. So the financial institutions are also looking at it. And this is something we really need to um, look at. So I'll, I'll stop there so that um, we can um, have questions or if you have um, anything you would like to know more about Edge, please um, do let me know. So Vera, thank you. Uh, thank you very, very much. Um, just going to, so hello. Um, thank you very much for this really good presentation. I think it was so helpful to set the scene and the context specifically to Africa and also just West Africa. And I think what we always love is those steps. A lot of the times we just need to know how do you start? And I think someone had asked this a bit earlier, like, you know, how do we just, or someone had mentioned this a bit earlier, how do we just take those next steps towards net zero? You start with green, then you start, you know, going to, as you said, you know, edge advanced, specific to edge, and then you go to carbon, um, zero carbon. But it's always just taking those steps and rather doing something than nothing, which is some of the comments that have come across all the different panels. Um, so thank you for that. I think at this point, I'm going to get our panelists to join the panel um, because there's quite a lot of, you know, really good things that we can speak about for this. So I'm just going to make sure that we have everyone on panel. Um, we also have Foster now from Ghana who has joined, which is great. Foster, just for you, I'm wearing some Kente fabric, just for you. Um, and we've got Emmanuel as well. Um, okay, awesome. So. Hi to all of our GBCs from, from West Africa and obviously Nigeria. I know that you're in the process of applying for that as well. So hi to all of you. Um, before we get into the questions and if anyone in the audience has got any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, let's maybe go around the room and just if everyone can introduce themselves and what country they're from. And then just what is the status of net zero of something like carbon zero in your countries and you know for those who are just joining Timmy will have you introduce yourself right at the end after all the GBCs have gone through so let's start with yourself Foster. Well uh, I'm Foster Sayakuno um, with Ghana Green Building Council and I'm also the president of the Ghana Institute of Architects. It's um, a pleasure to be part of this. Um, with Ghana We've been doing a lot uh, since the past decade. We, um, I think in 2000 and, uh, no, 20, 2019, we uh, were part of the uh, Racing to Net Zero campaign by the World Green Building Council. And um, we'll officially be uh, rolling out Net Zero uh, this year, last year we did um, energy performance certification uh, for some selected public buildings. And at the back of that, I mean, when we uh, was it called launching the report on the EPC, then we'll also launch um, net net zero. Um, as we speak, Edge will be that's IFC Edge. We'll be doing an uh, what's it called a, a student competition on net zero 
and they are launching it today, which uh, we've been invited to be part of it. But the Green Building Council will take it further. And then, um, like I said, um, it, it could be within the, uh, the Green Building Week where we'll official launch, uh, what's it called? Our Net Zero campaign. So that is where we are in Ghana. Thank you. Thank you. And there's quite a few questions and notes that I've been taking because, you know, it's quite interesting, you know, having sat in the East Africa, Southern Africa, and now the West and Central Africa, efficiency came up a lot. And a lot of the times people think net zero is high tech, but a lot of the times it's just start with efficiency, which is something that has been coming up quite a lot. So I think we'll, we'll get into that a bit more. Um, let's go over to you, Anne, from Cameroon. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, good, good evening. So yeah, um, I'm Teacher Anne from the Green Building Council of Cameroon. I'm a I'm a town planning engineer currently. So and I also work um, in a building company. So presently, at the level of Cameroon, we are mostly uh, at the level of advocacy. We are still uh, discussing with the different government, the ministries, to try to create policies towards the towards moving, moving towards net zero. But apart from that, we have uh, some startups, like the French startup, I think it's Gasco, who are producing some carbon char that uh, actually is a great initiative towards moving towards zero. So, but inside the, the building environment, was still at the level advocacy. Was still trying to create policies, working with the government, moving on. Thank you, and I think that's also quite important. So, you know, efficiency policy came up a lot as well. Um, so, thank you for that, and nice to have you on panel. And then, Emmanuel, as a council that's in the process of applying to be a member of GBC Nigeria, can you introduce yourself? It's great to have you. Okay. Hi. Good. Day. Um, okay, I'll say good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening from Nigeria. It's so good to be here. Um, I'm Emmanuel Falde. I'm an architect and also a director with the Green Building Council of Nigeria. So at the moment in Nigeria, I think we've gone um, reasonably far. So let me start from policies. Um, at the moment, the Nigeria government in the year last year signed um, a Climate Change Act into law that defines um, certain level of carbon um, emission, the benchmarks and uh, the parameter to use to check our carbon footprint um, in every sphere of expression. And also in Nigeria also, there is a, uh, a BEC code, um, Building Energy Efficiency Code, which also had been adapted into our national, um, national planning code for design. So this BEC code was sponsored um, by GIZ. Um, I think at some level, they also have some IFC backing. So this BEC code, in fact, what we have done uh, in the last couple of months as a council was to train our members and um, other stakeholders on how to uh, implement the BEC code specification in their projects. Of course, we have done the first phase of the training. The training is also continuing. And also for us as a council, we are as we are, as we are joining towards um of course using those support from federal government uh, the bec code the climate change act certain state government also started adapting um their state's design code into energy efficiency and some of them getting getting close to net zero uh, possibilities like lagos state government and Plato state government in fact lagos state government had set a timeline sometimes next year where certain projects beyond certain budget or height must run on a non um, green building certification or code. They are also at the, at the verge of signing that into law. And of course, Lagos is one is the biggest city in Nigeria. If that will happen in Lagos, I'm sure substantially the other things will be affected. And of course, also in Nigeria, we know that um, the work at hand as a council is enormous because we don't have so much of manufacturing in Nigeria. We have more of a real estate space and some um, consulting space where manufacturing is, is not commensurate to our population. So we know that um, 70 to 90% of the carbon footprints in Nigeria come within the construction space, either in material, 
or in the operation of the building. So we are working massively to ensure that um, every part of these um, essentials are connected. Then beside that, we also um, start looking at beyond net zero, right? For us is health in the building. So we're also looking at wellness in the building. If I think last weekend, we held the seminar with IWBI stressing um, the parameters and the indicators to follow to have healthy building. So for us, advocacy is at an advanced stage. Um, equipping our members and other professionals in the space is also at an advanced stage. We are now looking at a, um, at a three-sided expression. We are looking at, okay, how do we enforce this to make it firmly enforced across board one? We are looking at how to achieve net zero even from um, the younger perspective, the younger professional trainings. So we are looking at some of our campus campuses, adapting them into our cadet cohort as a council. Then we are now looking at healthy building. So we are not only focusing on the environment, we are also looking at health of the occupant. Um, so I believe as Green Building Council of Nigeria, we are on the right path. I, I think from government support and um, support from IFC, GIZ, I also think we are on the right path. I believe the next um, five years is strategic for us. Um, by the time we, sp we speak again, next two, three years about this conversation, trust me, Nigeria will be ahead of all African country. And of course, we are getting support from IFC. is is a massive support. A lot of projects in Nigeria. Our new vista of um, real estate development, um, Eco Atlantic uh, development. They are basically running on edge IFC. So of course, for some of them also, it's also a kind of um, um, a protection for their investment because they get financial support. They get um, they also get some immediate rebates from some state government. And so eventually, for us all is win win. If we are, and of course, also in Nigeria as a case study, buildings that have certain um, energy efficiency code or certification get to pay more rent or get to attract international clients. So there's a, there's a, an, there's a, there's a, in that, um, like an, an incentive that encourages developers to adapt this. Then even for government and also, there's also um, the pressure of international community. And of course, even for us as a body, Green Building Council of Nigeria, we're standing to our feet to ensure that um, in years to come, Africa come, Nigeria is number one, talking about this Green Building Council and Net Zero. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Thank uh, you. So we have a lot of our GBCs, first of all, panel, as well as also in the audience. So I see there's Tanzania and there's Ethiopia. We've got quite a few, South Africa, Uganda. Did we hear Nigeria say that they'll be number one? <laughs> so I think. So I think it's always good. And I think that's the power. <laughs> no, 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 we will, we will, we will, this trust is, me, we will. Like this is like, and I'm gonna do a bit of a detour here. This is like the jollof rice conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It's so always between Ghana, Ghana and Ghana jollof rice used to win, but now Nigeria <laughs> jollof rice is the best, trust me. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> okay, I don't so agree we with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we won't go that direction. But what I do know is this is the power of the Africa Regional Network. It's all the GBCs coming together and really being like, how do we move this movement forward? Because if one country in our network wins, then all of us win. Um, and so definitely, I think if there is anyone who's online right now who is thinking of having a GBC in their country, please do email us at africa at worldgbc.org because we'd love to see more within our network because this is how we'll continue to move Africa forward. And we love that. It's raising the climate ambition. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that, um, Emmanuel, in terms of setting the context. I've got a few questions and we only have like 15 minutes. And also, obviously, if there's anyone who's got questions in the audience, please let us know. Bangari says Kenya. So I see Kenya's also here. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so I think we'll really frame maybe this conversation for Western Central Africa around advocacy policy, um, some of the pilots that have been happening, so some of the lessons from that, and then finance. Because I know, you know, Temi, you spoke about some of the financial intermediaries who are buying into net zero and are actually saying we will finance and support this. Um, also, because it's just a, a better performing asset when it has got some of these climate and, um, elements in place. So we'll get to that. So I'll start with you. And from a policy advocacy perspective, you said that Cameroon is starting the process. 
what have been some of the challenges in a sense that Cameroon has been going through in order to get people to understand net zero? Not sure if and just froze as I asked the question. Okay, Anne, are you there? But uh, I did not get the question because uh, I don't know if it's my network or it's your network, but I did not actually get the question. Okay, no problem. So I'll repeat the question. You mentioned about um, policy and advocacy being kind of the first step that Cameroon is taking towards getting people to understand net zero more. What are some of the challenges or objections or things that people have brought up when as QBC Cameroon, you speak about net zero from, from the perspective of Cameroon? Okay, but here actually the most, um, the problem that we're facing is actually the difficulties to actually reaching the different ministries to actually uh, get them to understand that we actually need to start building the zero. It's been true that there are, there are several startup building startups that are actually moving toward the zero by building actually green and providing some green designs to the clients and, and all, but at the level of the policies, since the, the policy makers are the government and all the sort, we are actually having difficulty reaching out to them to actually make them to actually have like, I don't know, maybe a green building code for the country, things like that. So we're still working on how to actually penetrate the government to be able to work freely. And that's something that's been brought up quite a lot, you know, awareness that was even brought up by South Africa as well, just getting the awareness from the ministries. And maybe Foster, if you can speak into that as a council that has been able to push and, you know, start to slowly get the policy in, as you said, you're starting with efficiency, then you're going to push for net zero. How have you been able to address that challenge of getting awareness, um, especially from that perspective? Uh, yeah, I am. Well, it's not been very, very easy, or it's not been easy at all, but um, consistency, I mean, uh, pushing um, government, pushing the private sector, and pushing um, other, um, what's it called, development partners. It's, um, I mean, uh, so um, affecting policies, for instance, what we've been able to do in 2018 um, included, um, green buildings as a base in the Ghana building code. And uh, uh, currently, as we speak now, uh, legislation instrument is being prepared to make it mandatory. So um, that is the policy direction and uh, that's for the government. So um, it is virtually becoming a household thing, like green is becoming a household thing, not like uh, years ago, let's say a decade ago, when people, you talk about green and uh, they were like, what do you mean? Even with, with, with financial institutions, they did not understand it. And with um, the finances from, from IFC, some, I think uh, about three or four banks have signed up and they do get some financial support from IFC to learn on, on, on uh, green projects. Um, so a lot, some developers have um, have actually signed up for their. I think there are three certification uh, in Ghana. We've done some projects with LEED. We we started with Green Star, um, did a project with Green Star, done some projects with LEED, and then Edge. We're developing um, our tools, which um, due to financial constraint we are. Not there, but we'll definitely uh, launch it along the line. When it comes to efficiency, we felt um, there was a need to look at the existing building stock, that's existing building, and it made sense to look at the public sector buildings, that's uh, um, government buildings. So when uh, we're approached by, or were introduced by, uh, uh, the government through the energy um, ministry of energy and for that matter energy commission to GIZ um, and uh, partnered with them 
to do what we call energy performance certification, which we did the piloting around um, seven of the regions in, in, in Ghana. In, if I, in Ghana, there are three climatic um, zones. So we did, we did select buildings in all of them. And that gives us the basis to understand the consumption levels of the existing buildings. And based on that, strategies uh, will then be, be, be formulated to, re to help reduce the, uh, the energy consumption of those buildings. And uh, um, with edge, once you get to 40%, uh, percent, then uh, what's it called? We'll be approaching zero uh, energy. But we're not looking at only energy, like uh, my brother from Nigeria uh, mentioned. We're looking at healthy buildings. We're looking at the indoor environment quality because you can have um, what they call net zero energy building or net zero carbon, and the building, um, what they call the interior of the building, may kill the people. So uh, for us, it makes sense to 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 be holistic, but not to um, there are cases we'll be looking at even uh, what they call zero zero water, where the the project will be able to harness its own water and use its own water without depending on the on the uh, national grid. One critical thing which uh, I've been talking about is uh, the material for construction, where we have been developed. And I think it cuts across, it cuts across the entire Africa. We have been developed a material base for construction. So our carbon footprint in terms of material uh, importation is so huge. And uh, if it needs a lot of uh, research and development, which um, was it called? Some of us have started on a small scale with, this, with the resources that we have, but we continue to advocate on that and uh, would want to um, believe that along the line, uh, was it called, research not only by the university. The universities have done some research, a lot of them, but to partner with the, uh, with the private sector and for that matter, the developers to see how best um, those research can be uh, what they call brought, brought, brought out. So um, I should say in short sense, we don't have, we have about 12, 12 minutes to go. So let me leave the others to also <laughs> come Thanks, in. Love. Thank you. No, but that's good because I think it speaks really nicely into what Anne was saying about, you know, some of the challenges and how Ghana has been able to address it in the best way. And you mentioned quite a bit around baseline. So maybe that's, you know, we've gotten so many good challenges coming across the last few sessions around Africa, but it's almost like maybe as a continent, we do need to get to that point where GVCs are really supporting with baselining, like how are the buildings performing to begin with to get to net zero. Um, and then you also did speak quite a bit around health and well-being, which is one of our impact, er um, impact areas is the World Green Building Council. So we constantly speak about climate action, health and well-being, resources and circularity. So it all fits quite nicely and it's it's quite important. And I think it, it leads to Nigeria because you also have an energy efficiency code. Like you also have some of those codes. So, you know, how, it, how has Nigeria been approaching somehow integrating and putting net zero as one of the ambitions um, for the country? You mentioned Lagos State. So, so maybe if you can talk a bit practically about that, Emmanuel. Um, yeah. So thank you. I think for Nigeria, um, it happens that the dots were connecting. So it wasn't like um, the Green Building Council or the government set out to achieve net zero, right? But how the, do how the dots were connecting was um, GIZ coming to Nigeria to sponsor a research for our building um, energy efficiency code. Then IFC coming on board on to also say, you know what, we can push this further by looking at the net zero dimension. So then from um, then some government officials with driven vision and um, Western knowledge just came up and said, you know what, we can actually adapt this. So it was easier for the Green Building Council to, to just look at this existing blueprint and um, possibilities to ride on it. So we were not the one that advocated for this, 
they, they were tools that we met when we we're starting to be fully functional. So the beautiful thing also is that because the government um, are the ones that had pushed some of this initiative, the legislative part to back it up is getting easier by the day. Um, so because the government is pushing it to the house to pass it into law, then the Nigeria government also, they're trying to look at how to pass this thing into the federal law. So because it's coming from the executive, it's easier for the legislative to embrace. So our own path now became to spread um, the intelligence, to spread the awareness among professionals, because a lot of persons were not aware, to also, to also spread and talk about how this could be introduced into projects and the built environment. So I think for Nigeria, the dots were connecting by itself. It wasn't so much work or a lot of push and um, brick wall from any, any side of the divide. The government is doing their path. The um, donors or partners, IFC, GIZ, also doing their path. While we um, at the end of the at the hem of um, integration, we're also doing our bit by creating awareness, creating um, support and also bringing on board a collective uh, team of people with similar interests to talk about it and have the opportunity and also push for that to see. So our own part is now to add the bits that we is missing. And one of the bits that is missing is the wellness and um, the indoor air quality and the likes. But trust me, I think for Nigeria, um, of course, our, our budget is massive, either for real estate or for infrastructure or for um, research. We have massive budget across board from private sectors to government and even to certain smaller enterprise um, entrepreneurs and small business owners. So I think for Nigeria, the dots is connecting. It's, it's usually easier if the dots are connecting because it would have been difficult for us to go uh, pitch to IFC, pitch to GIZ, pitch to government. But trust me, in Nigeria, the dots are easily connecting. So it has made it kind of easier for us we um, we re, we relaunched Green Building Council of Nigeria um, January this year, and between now five months down the line, we've achieved a lot of milestone. Of course, it was before, but certainly um, some of the some of the part of GBCN that was before wasn't functional. But so we relaunched January this year, so this five months, and we had done a lot of um, achievements. So I, I think it's because the dots were ready to be connected. We're just connecting the dots. Um, thank you very much. That's awesome. And that really shows the power of just, you know, it's such a pity we literally have not even seven minutes because we do want to give time for the America's team to, to load and get ready. But I think it's such a, it's so encouraging to first of all, hear this from the most populous country on our continent, um, but also just to hear some of the stories, you know, from Ghana, from Nigeria, and even Cameroon to hear um, what you were speaking about. And I think um, if we go to you, Timmy, and in our last literally like two minutes <laughs> so that we can put that all together, you know, building to COP27, which is why just the role of Africa when it comes to the built environment this year is so critical. You know, as we lead, as we build to COP27, as we start, you know, trying to show that buildings are a critical climate solution as green building councils across our continent, um, there's a lot of talk about finance. And so I think maybe if you can, in a minute or so, uh, maybe give some examples of, you know, you did put a bit in your presentation, but some examples of how, you know, net zero is leading to property developers being able to access finance as an additional encouragement for people to go for net zero. And that would be your closing remarks. So the question okay. is, why <laughs> net zero? But, so I'll try to be um, to do this quickly in one minute. Um, so let me just start by IFC itself. Um, the way the, our strategy right now is um, really not to fund any projects unless we know that it has um, not not just net zero, but at least has um, some form of sustainability built into it. Okay. So it could come from edge, from lead, for, at least for buildings. It could come from any of these areas. But what we want to see is that indeed they are looking at this and they're doing something about it. So for IFC, if you want finance from us and you have a project that is a building, that's one thing that we're going to be asking you. If you come to us and say, oh, I'm not just looking at um, 
um, just being edge advanced, I want to go net zero. You can be sure that you can negotiate and say that, okay, I really want my interest rates to be this amount because you have um, pushed yourself, right? And that's the same thing that we're seeing also in terms of financial institutions. They want to see um, the market push itself that not just um, in, in going um, just edge advanced or just edge, but you can really look towards um, net zero. And for, for companies that also work in energy efficiency as well, you know, for zero, to go zero, net zero, it's not just, um, there are two pathways to it. There is um, the reductions pathway where you can reduce the energy that you you use or the removals pathway where you can do carbon offset and so on. So for companies that decide that they're going to um, be innovative in some of the, um, the reductions uh, systems, like maybe PVs that you can put on your buildings as, as a wall or something, those are um, going to look um, even a lot better to financial institutions in terms of putting, you know, putting their money into it. So all companies that are looking towards this should not just look at energy efficiency at a, at a low percentage, but going all the um, whole hog as um, zero carbon um, measures. Thanks, Thank you. So you said no more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's another session. Um, yes. There are quite a few things coming up as Africa Regional Network, um, including Africa Green Building Summit coming up in September. So we'll have more in depth, more time <laughs> for next time. But I think that's important to note, like what you said, financial intermediaries, financial institutions, they're starting to look at net zero. Um, a lot more, which I think is, is really great closing remarks. And thank you to IFC Edge for collaborating with us for this net zero session for Africa. It was really great having you. Um, and I think let's maybe do some closing remarks. There's a really good question around, you know, why are we looking at, or what's our track? Because a lot of people look at net zero carbon, but what about net zero other greenhouse gas emissions? But that will probably be a question for another session. Um, let's do closing remarks on why net zero in West and Central Africa. So we'll start with you, Anne, and then we'll go to Emmanuel, and then Foster, if you could please close us off. Over to you, Anne. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, um, I've actually participated to nearly all the different sessions. So, and I think that moving to net zero is actually necessary for the entire of Africa, not only Africa, but the world. It's very true that most of us, especially here in Cameroon, we believe that we do not cause the problem. So we don't know why we're part of the solution, but we need to understand that we have only one, one globe, like one atmosphere. So anything that, even if we do not cause the problem, we need to be part of the solution. So as I always say, we are not late in our development. What, instead having the chance to actually make something better than the developed world. So it's actually very beneficial to us that we are still uh, in the level of actually developing our own cities. So we actually need to make it net zero to actually be on the safe side. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And um, Emmanuel, why net zero in West yes, Central? So so firstly, I think we should look at our population. So we have the youngest population um, across continent. If you look at average African population, about 45% of Africans are within the age of 25 to 37. So what that meant is that the, the population dynamic is going to favor Africa in days to come. Number two, uh, Africa continent has the most deficit infrastructure development. So that means if there'll be tangible and vast um, investment infrastructure is going to be in the direction of West Africa and, and, Central, and Central Africa in the years to come. That means if we were able to start putting this in place, we're building infrastructure that will, be, that will be safe for our children to use. I also think that intellectually, Africans are massive intellectually. If there are things that we embrace as African, I'm sure the whole world will benefit from it. So I believe we are very strategic. I believe we are very dynamic. 
even though we can argue that the, most of the problem um, is, as, is not presently coming from us, but I think the solution can come from us. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Our GBCs are so wise. <laughs> like, we've all been taking so many notes um, upcoming. So, yeah, Pastor, your, your final comment? Yeah, okay. So, I think uh, energy costs um, continue to rise by the day. Um, let's say, what is it called? Petrol, for instance, or fuel is rising by the day. And uh, uh, it will only make a lot of sense if we can harness the resources that we have. Let's say solar, for instance. We have year-round sun, and why don't we use it? And that uh, once we're able to move into renew renewables, what happens is a lot of savings that we will we'll have over the years, and that will go into our infrastructure development. So in short, let us move into renewables, save money so we can uh, develop the infrastructure that we need for the population yet unborn. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much to every single one of our panelists across the entire Africa session. So from East Africa to Southern Africa to West and Central Africa, Thank you to all of our Green Building Councils who are doing such great work in your countries. We really, really appreciate that. Um, as I hand over to Americas, quite excited to see how that all goes. There's a certain sentiment that has been said quite a lot um, to, to just, yeah, it's been said across all the different sessions. And it's quite interesting because it is from Native America, from my understanding. And the sentiment has been that we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. And I think that that puts a lot of responsibility on every single one of us in this room. Africa has a population of 1.3 billion people, more than you know, 60% of the population is under the age of 19. And I think that we really need to consider net zero in how we build, not only for existing buildings, but also for future buildings and cities to come. So thank you, everyone. Thank you to everyone who's been a part of us. Handing thank over you. to Americas. Thank, thank you. you Vera. Thank you, Saul. Thank you, Vera. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank, thanks, everyone.